Just in time for wedding season and graduation parties, it is Cookie Table Week here on PTL. Every day this week, we are featuring recipes and tips to help you create the best cookie table ever. And with so many cookies to choose from, it's really hard to pick your favorite. But this week, we are showcasing the top five according to the Wedding Cookie Table Community Facebook group. So far, we have made chocolate chips. Lady Locks, iced sugar cookies, all with our new friends from the Cookie Table Group. And today, we're learning how to make the perfect pizzelles and galettes at, with our special guests here today. Welcome, John Palmieri and daughter Darcy Smouse, second and third generation owners of the baking irons that we'll be using to make our cookies here today. And thank you both for being here. Thanks this is for exciting. Us. And I wish people at home had smell o vision because it smells so good <laughs> here as you're making these. That's good. Yeah. Uh, so tell me first just how to say, because we've been what, saying things wrong. So we've been saying pizzelles, yeah. it's pizzelles. Pizzelle. There's pizzelle. just two Z's. No T. There's two Z's. Okay. No T's. And then the other cookie, we've been. It's the galette. The galette. galette. Okay. And some people I, call them a Belgian waffle cookie. Okay. But and so the difference is they're a little bit smaller and thicker than thicker. a pizzelle, yes. right? Yes. Okay. And we're going to be making both of these right now. Mm -hmm. Now, for, off first off, I wanted to hear just sort of the history because your family has quite a history with the pizzelles and the irons, right? Right. We've been doing this for about 75 years. My grandfather started and he started with a hand pizzelle. Did you want to see that? Sure, yeah. Okay. So this is what he started with. This, this is, is how they were made originally. Originally, right? over the campfire and over the stove top. Okay. And it's just a hand iron, a press, and as you can see, they would stamp them with their names and stuff in. My grandfather did that. Right. So, so and you were able to sort of monogram the pizzelle. Correct. And yeah, we do that. We cool. brought that back. Okay. And then uh, my father made them electric in the okay. early 60s. He put, made an electric, and that's the irons we're using today. Right. And so, John, you, you came back from Florida to be with us for this, I, right? I drove all the way back from Florida <laughs> just to be here <laughs> to show to off this. Themselves. So you created this, this iron that electric you're using one, here, yes, the electric did. one. Yes. And what's the trick to making a good pizzelle? The batter. The batter. The batter. All right, well, tell us about the batter. What, what is, oh, look at those. Those look great. You were saying you were having problems before. I don't think these are problematic at all. It was sticking a little bit. Oh, they were sticking. Was, yeah. okay. A little bit of sticking. Sometimes you get into that problem. You just have to work it out. Just keep trying. Keep okay. making them. And keep spraying more Pam. Spray, so you spray <laughs> these down with Pam. That's very important. Yes. And then what is in the batter? How, what, what is the pizzelle batter is very simple. It's just eggs, flour, sugar, and then... Um, your vanilla is your okay. flavoring or any flavoring that you like. Um, vanilla, some people put um, orange flavoring in, some put anise. Anise, Anise yeah. is a very popular one. Almond. So whatever yeah. you can think of. Is there one that's more authentic flavoring-wise? Like if you were in Italy, the what anise. would the, the anise, anise. anise And I yeah. love the anise mm -hmm. ones because my Aunt Pat makes those. Yes. Shout out to Aunt Pat. All right, so you're going to teach me how to do this, The right? galettes. These are the galettes. So it, in fact, if someone has not seen what the difference is, they're much, they're smaller and they're thicker yeah, than, the, than the, right. And I've had and these before, too. they taste a little too. different, too. They taste a little bit mm -hmm. different. Okay. Yeah, but then is it the same batter? No, and here's some brown sugar also. Oh. Along with your flour and your butter and everything else, and okay. um, whiskey, whiskey and some rum. Oh wow! <laughs> now is this a special extra. recipe that you guys do, or is this the recipe for the, a galette? No, this is the original recipe from the Belgian people. Oh. They give us they give us the recipes. So the, the galette, the pizzelle is Italian, but mm. the galette is Belgium. 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 Mm -hmm. Okay, and so whiskey and rum is in the original recipe. Yes. yes. Wow. I wasn't, All right. I wasn't around back then. This is then. the first cookie table uh, <laughs> experience we've had with whiskey and rum in the cookie. There you go. All right. So, so you just take your spoon and you want to go ahead. Okay. Spoon it anywhere in the center. Or you put anywhere. it in the center. It doesn't really matter because it's the same pattern throughout. And this has been sprayed down with pan. Yes. Okay. And oh my gosh, oh, I can't okay. even get it off. You're good. Okay. It doesn't. It can be anywhere because it's all the same pattern. Okay. Go ahead and then and we'll do another one. one. And then how long does it take? This takes about a minute. Now the pizzelle only takes about 35 to 45 seconds, depending on how dark you like them. Just because they're thinner. Mm -hmm. to begin they're thinner with. and they cook quicker. Yeah, because I know oh, people good. making uh, cookies for wedding tables, you know, they like to make things in advance and be able to freeze them too. Mm -hmm. Can you freeze pizzelles and galettes? Uh-oh, am I stumping you? I don't <laughs> freeze them. We, we, do don't freeze. Freeze. we, we eat, don't freeze we eat them. them too quickly. Yeah. You eat them too quickly. All right. Yeah. There's no need to freeze. You yeah. can no. keep them. Some people keep them in a tin for a long time. Yeah. But we, we don't ever last that long in our house. Usually within a week or two, they're all gone. So. Yeah. <laughs> 
You're not messing around. No. And, and tell me about these over here because they look like cannoli, but you've, it's sort of different, right? Well, they're the Pizzell, and what we did is when, as soon as he took it off the iron, we rolled it hot with a roller. Okay. And then once so they, they cooled, still warm and well, they were still warm. Okay. They, they have to you to do it right, right off the iron, and then we filled them with cannoli filling. Cool. So that looks wonderful. All right, I, before we run out of time, I I need to taste one of okay. these. Now, what is this flavored with? That one is the almond. Mm. Okay. It's so cold. Let's check this so we don't burn them. There yeah, oh, it's coming along. Now you take your little fork. And take my little fork. Don't burn yourself. Okay. I'm trying to. There Throw we go. There. there you go. Hey, not bad. See that? You, With you're your professional. guidance, I was able to do it. <laughs> you're a professional. <laughs> I don't know about that. But anyway, thank you so much thank for you being for here. Us. Love these cookies. They're wonderful. And keep watching here on PTL. Tomorrow, we will wrap up Cookie Table Week with a cookie everyone's been talking about, the Italian peach cookie. We'll find out how to make them and, of course, see how they taste. And if you'd like copies of today's recipes, you can go to Pittsburgh Today Live. We also have a link to the Wedding Cookie Table community on Facebook. It's 17,000 members strong. Actually, we heard this morning, they've now upped it to 18,000 members because we've been talking about it here on PTL. Lots of great recipes and tips that they share on that page.